It is finally November of 2023, which is great news. For those of you not in the know, November is a annual celebration of everything procedural. And this year we have our 30 prompts. Now it seems like they're doing two prompts for every two days. I don't like that. I like the old school method where each day has a single word. The goal for today is to make a gorgeous render. And I actually came up with an idea. Here is the render that I'm gonna be trying to make. Okay, delete everything and add in an object. And this is going to be my geo nodes object. And we're not allowed to use anything outside of geometry nodes. It needs to be pure procedural. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna have a point that kind of shoots up, but also respects gravity. So it comes back down. So of course we're gonna need our points primitive and to launch this upwards with gravity and acceleration and everything, I'm going to use a simulation zone, which I'm gonna say is procedural, whatever, this counts. So what I wanna do is I wanna change the position of this particle relative to an offset that I'm going to call velocity. And we need to define this velocity. So I'm gonna store a named attribute called V and velocity is gonna be equal to itself plus an acceleration. So we literally just add these quantities and just like before, uh, we haven't defined acceleration. We store named attribute A for acceleration and I'm just gonna make this slightly negative. That's what gravity is. So now if I play this, it's actually going a bit fast. So I'm gonna make it like four times smaller. If I play this, you can see it's not only falling, but it's accelerating. So the only other thing we need to do now is to launch this particle. So it shoots upwards. I'm gonna give it a initial velocity. So I'm storing again the V velocity attribute and I'm gonna give it an initial velocity of let's say 0.14. So now it's gonna launch up upwards and then gravity is going to take it. So I'm going to put some on the x-axis. Now the question of this tutorial is how do we take a particle and split it into two? And then those particles can also split into two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that is the difficult part. And to spawn two particles on our points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to again use a points node. This time we're going to have two points and I'm literally going to instance it on our geometry that the position is getting updated to again and again and again. I want to instance two more points, give these things a initial velocity. So let's say instead of like having a predictable one, I ran randomize it. So I'm going to have this max at 0.2. And for the X and Y axis, I'm going to have this go at negative 0.2 because I want my gravity or my Z component to not shoot downwards. And we are going to join it with our geometry, meaning first we have a point that's doing the gravity stuff and then we're instancing and then those points are instancing. And just to make sure this works, I'm going to realize our instances so that they're all point data. So there we go. <laughs> uh, you want to be careful with this because it's going to explode on frame 14. I already have 5 million particles. What I need to do is I need to make a condition for when this like duplication happens. I'm gonna do this by making an attribute called age and age is going to be actually just the frame number. Well, what it means is when this particle is spawned, it's gonna have a velocity and an age attribute that just looks at what frame it was when it was spawned. And equivalently, I wanna store this over here. Meaning if I go a couple frames down before this explodes to a lot of particles, you can see some particles are of age six. And if we scroll down here, some particles are of age two and three, etc. Now this is what's gonna let us actually decide which points are spawning more points. So we can do that via the selection. We take the frame number, and if I take these and subtract them from each other, you can think of this quantity as basically saying the number of frames since it's been spawned. So we're gonna say if this quantity is greater than let's say 10, then this is the condition under which we can spawn more points. Now this still isn't everything, but now you can see it's not getting as crazy as quickly. Another thing I'm noticing is you can see it's kind of making these like streaks, and that's because our random value isn't randomized in terms of the seeds. So I'm just gonna use the frame number. Now when I play this, it's acting a bit better. This particle, which is gonna spawn more, uh, first of all, it does that, but then it's going to keep splitting again and again and again, because it's still gonna make the condition that it's greater than 10. So I wanna make sure that we're also deleting our particle after like 10 frames or so. So we can also add a delete geometry and we say delete the geometry that meets the same condition, right? So this particle splits into two and then this becomes four, eight, 16, 32, yada, yada, yada. One thing I'm noticing is that it's kind of like tending to like rise up a bit, which makes sense because each time we're getting that velocity upwards that I didn't randomize that much. So I'm gonna set this back down to 0.1. Okay, I'm liking the look of this. It's spreading out, but it's staying like fairly centered, which I like. Now, if we wanted to add more variation, we can say instead of like every 10 frames, we can randomize this and then also do this for the delete attribute. Actually, I guess why not, right? So I'm going to do a random value. This is going to be an integer between let's say 10 and 15. So some of the particles will have to wait 15 frames. And this is a seed I wanna keep consistent because I don't want this this to change every frame. And now you can see that these are like really staggered compared to each other, which I think adds a little something something. At a certain point, these like particles again become way too many. So I wanna add one more condition. And that condition is basically going to be again, another randomization, except this one is going to be a Boolean that says under, you know, let's say 50% probability, it's going to split. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna multiply it by this conditional. This should also be updating on every frame, or we can make it update, let's say on every like third frame. and 
basically this is gonna make it grow a little less uh, quickly. Okay, so now I think we're at the point where we actually wanna like render this. Instead of having a bunch of points, I want these to be visible and for us to be able to update the material, I'm going to instance. So it's doing this whole calculation and then we are going to instance a UV sphere, make the radius smaller and we don't need this much geometry. And then we also wanna make sure that these particles get smaller over time because otherwise they just dominate our frame. So since this is a 250 frame composition, I can use that information. So I take the frame number and I'm gonna divide by the total number of frames. In other words, this is basically gonna be equal to one over 250 on the first frame. And on the last frame, this is gonna be equal to one. Meaning we can now subtract, let's do one minus this quantity. So originally it's nearly one and then it kind of goes to zero. We can also clamp this just in case. We make this the scale. You can see it starts off at one size and then over time it should be getting smaller. It will be a little hard to tell because it takes time. But yeah, I think these particles are reliably uh, getting smaller. I think the last thing we can do with this is just add some visual interest. And I'm going to do that with variation. I'm going to take the scale. And again, I'm going to multiply. We're just doing randomness everywhere, making sure to like pick a different seed. Except now you can see that there's this flickering, which tells me that this approach isn't stable. So what we need to do is we got to make some attribute that stores, let's say the radius. So when we instance and spawn our duplicate particles, what we can do is we can store one more thing, or actually we can just set the radius. There is a, a node for this to a, a random value between let's say zero and one. I'm actually going to do 0.5 and one, or let's see 0.5 and one. So none of them can be too small, meaning I can now multiply by the radius. Okay. Our initial particle is way too small. And then it actually starts working uh, because our first particle is small. I can just take our point, increase the radius that should fix it. And now when I play, you can see these aren't all the same size. There's actually some variation here and they're actually stable. Let's get this to the point of rendering finally. So go to the render tab. I'm going to use cycles for actually a very specific reason for this one. I'm going to make our environment black, which is going to make none of these particles visible. And to fix that, I'm going to assign a material to our spheres. And that material is basically just going to be like an emission pass. And under emission, I want to make sure the strength is like larger than zero. I'm going to pick a color that I like, like let's say blue, which makes it visible. But as these get smaller, it's kind of hard to see my particle, right? They're not like actually doing anything to the environment. And I think the easiest way to do that is with some volumetric fog. So I'm going to take a cube, scale it up so that we're actually inside the cube with our camera and then apply a material to this, which is going to be any kind of volume, like a, a principled volume. We're not going to see anything because the smoke is obviously, or the fog is too thick. So I'm going to bring down the density, bump up the strength by let's say like 25. So now it should be actually emitting light on our environment, but it still looks pretty boring to me. And that's because every particle is essentially the same. So I want to add some variation to them. I can do that by taking our object info and looking at the random. This works in both cycles and EV, by the way, we're going to take this and connect it to a hue saturation value where this is going to be the hue. And then we can pick some like color, like red, the colors are randomized. We take our random and just make it like less varied by like dividing by five. And now you can see we have a single color, but some variation. Connect this to the emission color and view that. Take the strength and bump that up. So it's actually casting more light on our volume. And another thing we can do is we can have this particle kind of like fade out until it like splits at the end by bringing in one of our attributes, making sure that this is instancer because we are instancing and I want the age attribute where I am going to subtract. I'm going to take the frame number, which you can get from hash frame, connect this to the alpha, in other words, the transparency, and then we just got to do a map range. First of all, this should be inverted and we can save from like zero to 15 on average. Let's actually make that 13. So this particle is going to kind of like fade away. And then all of a sudden more particles come, they fade away. Actually, just to randomize this again, just a little, I'm going to take our randomness and again, map range, take zero to one and make it like 0.7 to one. We can multiply the number like 13 or whatever it is uh, by a bit of randomness. So they're not all doing the same thing. They should all not be fading at the exact same like interval now, which again is going to make it look like each particle is acting independently. Now the piece, the resistance, the thing that makes this look so cool is actually a glitch. It wasn't supposed to happen, but that's exactly what makes it look cool. And of course I'm talking about motion blur. So make sure you're in cycles because it treats motion blur differently. And I'm going to bring this up to let's say one. Now, why am I doing this, right? I go to a frame and let's say that I render it. You can see we have a particle with a bit of motion blur, right? It's showing the trajectory. The reason we're doing this is as these particles split, you're going to notice something like really weird. You see, sometimes we get these lines that kind of come out of nowhere, like we didn't define these. And the reason that they're there is that when a particle splits, it's deleting its initial thing and then just kind of splitting and like resetting the indices and everything. The motion blur kind of gets confused. It's thinking that spheres are being teleported to positions that they're not. And I think this is what makes it look visually interesting. If you don't want it to be as much, 
much, you take the shutter and you bring it down a little. So let's try rendering that. Still get these lines, but they should be a bit fainter, which makes sense. Uh, one trick that will help you is in your simulation node kind of physics thing, you, you can actually bake or cache the simulation, which uh, you can see makes all of this purple, meaning that everything is already pre-calculated. And I think it would also be interesting to add some depth of field. And I want to pick a distance where we don't get all of this nonsense. So in look dev view, we can actually see our particles and we just find the distance where some of these particles are in focus. To make this look a bit more techno, you can take the number of blades and make it like five or six. You can kind of tell that these bokeh balls aren't perfect circles anymore. They're hexagons, which I think looks much cooler. And I didn't render it at that high of a quality, so it's going to look a bit splotchy, but you get this very cool techno thing. But there you go. That is the first day of November. Tomorrow we have the prompt garden, so make sure to subscribe to this channel and the CG Matter channel. I'm going to alternate to get you to subscribe to everything. If you want the blend file for this, it's in the description. That's why I'm pointing down. You want to join Patreon because I'm about to upload 30 custom Geo Node setups. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.